everything that there's just too little love. Love, sweet love is the theme of tonight. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Andrea Burns, your Monday night guest host for Stars in the House, and we are talking love tonight. This is a special episode we are calling Date Night, and I am very excited because, you know, I'm usually out here with brilliant friends that I invite to uh, share with you um, what they're doing, but I am super excited to share the guest host spot tonight with somebody that I love, um, someone who is a prominent stage director, and is also somebody, a Stars in the House favorite um, for being the streaming director of the Plays in the House twice a week. Please welcome my guest host and my husband, Peter Flynn. Hi, honey. Hi, good evening. Good evening. How, How are, are you? you? Good. So, it's date night. Hi, everybody. So we brought a little, I brought a little festivity <laughs> here. We're bringing the party. Thank you. This was waiting for me when I arrived. So thank you. You're very Here's welcome. Your, You're nice very hostess. welcome. Yes. So wait, should we? Sure. Okay. Here's to you. Here's to you, baby. Welcome. So um, I thought I would kick this off for those of you who don't know us. Peter and I have been married almost 24 years. And um, we, okay. Oh, and yep. there it is. Thank you, David, <laughs> our tech director, throwing that wedding photo up there. Um, wow. That is us. Yeah. I didn't know my mouth was quite that big until I looked at that picture just yeah, now. Yeah. I was, that was my second happiest day of my life. The first, well, it shares with when our son was born. That's so sweet. But, yes. Uh, it was a great day. Our son Hudson, who is the technical director of the Plays in the House. So it's a family yeah. run operation here. So if you'd ever like to work at Stars in the House or Plays <laughs> in the House, the adoption papers are ready and you just, you'll become a part of the Bernstein family. Exactly. And, and we'll as, hire you. As a matter of fact, can we change the, um, can you? Oh yeah, here. So that you're included here. Yeah. It's not just Andrea Burns. The two of us. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, shall we tell everybody how we met? Because it's kind of a showbiz story. Wow. Okay. Um, Peter and I met 26 years ago about playing Tony and Maria in West Side Story on the European tour. Um, that is where we met. And I would yeah. say. And who were you playing? I was. Did you say? Yeah, I played oh, Maria. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Flat hand, I was obviously. very busy putting my name into this. Lute uh, Lieutenant Shrink. I played Maria. <laughs> you played Tony. I did play Tony. That is how we met. Yeah. And um, in fact, I was already playing the role of Maria, and um, I got to sit in on Peter's audition for Tony. And I was like, that guy is so amazing. <laughs> I hope they hire him. Please, please. Um, and I remember you had a very sturdy name, but I couldn't remember it. So I was telling my friend that night, I was like, this guy came in and he was so good. And he was such a great actor. And I loved him. He had a strong name. It was like, ba, ba, something very <laughs> solid. But I couldn't for the life of me remember Peter Flynn, which would be the name of my husband hey. for the next close to hmm, 30 years. years. Yeah, 24 years. Close yeah. to 24 years. So, um, and my part of the story oh. is after I got cast, it was six weeks after I got, after the audition, right? So we saw each other at my audition. Yes. And then I didn't get a call. In fact, the director who was there gave me the kiss of death. He basically said, he said to me, if you don't get this job, it's not because you didn't do an excellent audition. And I thought, oh, well, I'm not getting this Well, job. let me explain kiss of death because we've been using this all the time. It's basically when you go into an audition and they tell you how much they love you right there. Yeah. And they're super effusive because it's very clear they're never going to see you again. So they're just yeah. like, oh, you are so You're fabulous. Great. You're great. You know what the worst is? They're like, come in. Come in for that hug. When you come in for that hug, you know you're not getting one on the first day of rehearsal. Yeah. So anyway, it was very kiss of death because he said, if you don't get it, it's I not want you to you know. Didn't do a great job. And he, it was a spectacular audition. Right. So I remember him saying that and going, why is he saying that? He's and so I bad. thought, oh, I'm not getting this job. And I, for a very long time, I didn't think I did. And then six weeks later, the Friday before Thanksgiving, I got the call that I was due in Europe the next Monday. And so I went out and uh, met you. Yes. And because I was going into the show, I watched the show first. I didn't, I, I was rehearsing during the day and then watching the show at night. And the first time I saw the show, I watched the balcony scene and you were playing Maria and it was the most beautiful. Again, still playing, playing Maria. Maria. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you hadn't shifted yet to shrink. <laughs> exactly. We did that in, I think, Hamburg. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I watched the show and it was a beautiful balcony scene and you sang it so beautifully. It was really just a, a beautiful 
those of you who know Andrea and have heard her saying, you know what I mean. And I thought, I have to go backstage and just tell her how moved I am by how um, potent that scene was and how beautiful she sounded. And I couldn't find her. And I went down a hallway in, back, in the backstage area. And there was this group of really big German stagehands standing in a corner. And as I turned to walk away, they all burst into this huge laugh and they dispersed. And in the middle of them was you having just finished telling a joke. And that's when I, like my heart just like swelled. I thought I have to, I have to marry that woman. It's and true. I was I was in the little white dress with the red sash. Yeah, totally. I was uh, <laughs> telling, jokes. You know, telling jokes in the wings, yeah, so. breaking up the stage hands. That's really when, like, th that's when you had me. Like, you know, it was not just the voice, but when I when you were that funny, I thought, oh my god, there's nobody else. That me. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so the rest is history, and now we have a son who is half jet, half shark, and he is the technical director for the plays in the house. We have the wonderful David Katz uh, for Stars in the House, but on Wednesdays and Saturdays, you two work together. Yeah. You want to tell a little bit about that? Uh, those of you that watch, we do Plays in the House every Wednesday and Saturday at 2 p.m. We've had some original Broadway companies. We've had some new companies. We uh, partner with Gingold Theatrical Group and Live and in Color. And uh, so every Wednesday and Saturday, Hudson and I sit with each other and I make a call script and I'm calling shots while he's at the control board like David is this evening. And uh, it's really fun. It's, it's, been, really it's been something really uh, unexpectedly wonderful for the two of us to do during the summer this, this year. Plus our teenage son is like the only person who got a job during quarantine. Yeah. So he's super happy, has nowhere to spend the money, um, <laughs> nowhere to go. <laughs> but anyway, um, okay, so we, We've been together for, you know, already like 25 years. Say it again. And, okay, but we've also, um, we've been in this business a long time and some of our very close friends are from way back. How long have we known Seth Rudetsky? Seth, I met, I met Seth before I met you. Seth right, and was I the met musical Seth. director of my very first show out of college. Seth was the musical director at the Surflight Theater on Long Beach Island, New Jersey. Uh, one week stock, non-union, I played 17 roles in 18 weeks. Some of the best roles I'll never play. Well, what were some of the roles you played back to back? Uh, Count Dracula, El Gallo, <laughs> Caiaphas, Nikki Arnstein, <laughs> Nathan Detroit, uh, Billy Nikki. Lawler, back to back. Right. And Seth was amazing because Seth, I don't think he'll mind me telling the story. Seth, even back then, was cracking us up on stage because he would put in other pieces of music in the middle of musicals where it didn't belong. For instance, we were doing While he was accompanying, boat. right. Uh, we were doing Showboat, and the young woman who was playing Julie Laverne just found out that she she was going to be cast in West Side Story for some tour after uh, the summer was over. And so she finished singing Bill, which finishes with, because he's just my Bill, and there's a little play out. And as she held on to the word Bill, Seth played the end of America underneath the lyric. So we heard... <laughs> He's very, he's very sneaky that way. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he's a dear friend of ours for a million yeah. years, of Over course, James for so long. And um, they've obviously created this wonderful, wonderful place where we can all gather at night and talk to wonderful creative people. So much love to Seth and James tonight. Um, we are also very excited. And you know, Seth and James won the Drama Desk Award. Uh, four stars in the yes, house. Yes, with Dr. John LaBook, four yeah. stars in the house this year. So exciting Mazel. at Mazel Tov. Very nice. Um, I'm the Jew, but he's more Jewish in some ways, actually. But we'll get into that later, or maybe not. Wow. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I can't wait. You'll find out when I do. <laughs> um, you guys know that we've shifted our giving at Actors Fund. I know. Yes, at Stars in the House from the Actors Fund to the NAACP LDF. And uh, tonight, we'd love for you to donate, and you can send your donations um, to NAACP LDF dot org, I think it's on the bottom of the screen, um, slash stars in the house dot com. So if you make a donation tonight, and then once you receive the receipt, if you email it back to stars in the house 2020.com at we... gmail.com. Stars oh in the house 2020 at gmail.com. Yeah. We do the same thing at plays in the house. That's where my info yeah, comes in. You're, you're a better host with that. But stars in the house 2020 <laughs> at gmail.com. Send us the receipts and we'll read out your donation. 
uh, on the program this evening. Yes, but first uh, let's tell you a little bit about the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund. It's America's premier legal organization fighting for racial justice. Through litigation, advocacy, and public education, LDF seeks structural changes to expand democracy, eliminate disparities, and achieve racial, racial I did this again, racial justice, Jennifer Edison, and achieve racial justice in a society that fulfills the promise of equality for all Americans. Uh, the Legal Defense and Educational Fund also defends the gains and protections won over the past 75 years of civil rights struggle and works to improve the quality and diversity of judicial and executive appointments. Donate tonight at NAACPLDF.org slash starsinthehouse.com. Then send the receipt to us at starsinthehouse2020 at gmail.com and uh, let us read your name out loud and say hi worldwide. He's so, hear. he's so good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a little Fred Rogers. Yes. No, no. It's just very Roger well, here. very well executed, very organized. We're we're a good yin and yang. Which brings us to our next guest. <laughs> I'm so excited, you guys, because um, first of all, you know, Zoom culture, this is what date night looks like. Um, and so we are having some of our best friends. I've been lucky enough to have so many people that I love uh, as guests on our show. But uh, these two gentlemen that I love very much, I love especially because they are also our couple friends and um, we just treasure our time with them. So let me bring them out. Um, first, I'd like to, well, they'll be together. <laughs> They live in this. They, they live in the same. They, house. they sheltered in place together. Together. Go figure. Okay, so um, having taken over from Alex Lacamoire uh, conducting Hamilton and and leading that company for so long, we have musical director Kurt Crowley, also recently last seen on Broadway, um, uh, playing keyboard for Freestyle Love Supreme, and the wonderful Carlos Gonzalez currently on Broadway in West Side Story. And uh, he and I did On Your Feet together. That's how we met. And um, we adore them both. Please welcome Kirk Crowley and Carlos Gonzalez. Hello. Hi. 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 Look at your cute house. Look how great you look. Oh, you know, we We're got... giving you patterns. <laughs> Peter, you didn't get the memo. Is it us? You can't hear uh, well, Now we, we got are. it. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you Peter, got Peter didn't get the florals patterns sort of memo, but you know, he's, he's it's got It's light and breezy. It's, very, it's easy for you to read. You know. <laughs> summary. Yeah. Back in the day, it's, it's a preppy look. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Know? With your stories. Oh my gosh. That, I, I was like, you know, do you just, you guys take the whole hour and just tell us <laughs> stories. <laughs> It was amazing. I was like, we, we can Take just watch. Yeah, we can be in the waiting room. Maybe you gave us the kiss of death before the show started. You were like, can't wait to see you. <laughs> Please, this is just another dinner at your house. Um, yes. And I was also dying with the, with the Peter Flynn, like bum bum name. Do you like Don't that? Kirk Crowley. My family can't pronounce it. They call him Papi, <laughs> Mi Amor. That's or... because we both have, uh, I have it in my last name and Kirk has it in his first. The U-R is a very tough thing for Spanish people yeah. to understand. Kurt, Kurt. Andrea Burns. <laughs> it's, it's tough. <laughs> So I understand, but you guys look so good. Now, I wish I was really at your house for dinner because I know what we would be doing right now. Uh, Carlos is amazing. Well, Kurt's a great cook in his own right, but we make Carlos make Cuban food for us quite often. <laughs> and, um, I wish we were having that now. So in honor, we actually made, we have some maduros here. <laughs> Let me see it. Let me see it. It's that looks good. good. That looks yeah. good. Like real good. We actually have a, uh, a sample what is it? A sampler sampler test, platter. A sampler platter. Look and at first of all, look at the pool of oil. If you don't have the pool of oil, <laughs> you didn't do it right. So these are the, the salty <laughs> ones. And these are the sweet ones. So we have two. Nice. Okay. That looks amazing. A little salty, little sweet. I, I know. Like and he just thing, another drink. So cheers. Him up. <laughs> so cheers to you, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. Of course. I love, love you. I'm gonna be with you guys. Oh. Awkward silence while we drink. <laughs> um, okay, so guys, how did, you are both such extraordinary gentlemen in your own right, extraordinary artists. How did you meet? Well, uh, there's gonna be a lot of full circles tonight, but we met yes. on a little show called In the Heights, which I know you are very familiar with. 
Yes. Um, the aforementioned Alex Lackamore had hired me to music direct the second national tour of that show. So I was out doing the, you know, one nighters bus and truck across the country, bringing in the Heights to all of the small towns across the <laughs> Northeast and Midwest, uh, which was a really wonderful experience. And my first touring experience is amazing to hear you guys talk about, you know, your, your careers in your, in your twenties. And that's, that's yeah. exactly what it was. It was like, you know, when Alex said, do you want to go on the road? I was like, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously like <laughs> what, what else would I want to do? I mean, so I was, I was doing that show and Carlos came in as a, as a replacement kind of late in the tour. It was only about three months left to go. Okay. And, you know, as, um, as the, the, the fiction that became fact, we started, well, the first thing I had to do was teach him the song breathe because he was singing in the background of that. So we had a lot of sort of extra sessions where I had to sort of get him on stage to do that. And uh, so that song became the first way that we were, we were bonding, you know, talking about diction and uh, me, the white guys talking Teaching to him about Spanish. diction. <laughs> <in> Spanish. <laughs> so what was that like, Carlos, when he was like trying to break down the Spanish for you? Well, I was so nervous. So I joined late. So of course, and singing was <laughs> my weakest thing. So of course I, I picture like an old musical theater, like conductor guy. I, don't, I just had an image of this old guy who was going to be super strict. I had to learn the show. No, like, I yes. <laughs> I had to learn the show super quick. I, re I learned it over the weekend, basically. And I was like, one of those crazy, you know, um, replacement gigs. And then I met Kurt, and he was just like teaching that little section that he's talking about was in Spanish. So he was like, no, no, no. Es sigue andando el camino. <laughs> 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 So that was very endearing. I think you were actually one of the few people on that tour who who spoke Spanish, though. That's like, true. Spoke fluent Spanish. That's true. So that was, I think I had got, I had, I had had to learn it, you know, phonetically because I didn't speak Spanish at the time either. And so I was very excited, like, oh, let me get to try this out. Of course, on a native native Spanish speaker. And so then, you know, there was like the really the tail end of the tour, you know. So we we kind of got together at the end of the tour, and then you know went into the business. Like he went off on a cruise ship. Uh, I got to do Bring It On on Broadway. We were separated. It was this crazy crazy business but like somehow we decided that was you know sort of a showmance very similar to yours a showmance that that stuck and just you know from that yeah. one moment I love Peter's story about the you know the German stagehands <laughs> you know we had those similar moments where I was in the pit you know we just catch eyes for a second when he was in the dispatch you know Domingo in the dispatch <laughs> with the microphone and we just sort of catch eyes for a second I was on the phone pretending I'm on the phone and I'm staring at him in the con as a conductor <laughs> and like <laughs> Nina is singing her song breathe and I'm just like as you know, especially in, in <laughs> Domingo's track, you have a lot of downtime in that dispatch. So yeah, we yeah. Have fun with that. <laughs> it's oh been eight God. years, not twenty-five years, eight years. <laughs> it's been eight years. In eight years. So, wow. Um, wow. you, uh, so you decided to make things official, and that was a, a big decision for you guys. And um, I hear that you had an extraordinary uh, person bring you together in what it meant. <laughs> I don't know, it's a story I've heard that, uh, yeah, can you feel, can you tell us about that? <laughs> well, I mean, so to skip to skip over a lot of details of how we, we, all, we all, we'll go yeah. back. Right, so, uh, so Carlos actually proposed to me in Spain and he actually got a flamenco guitarist to play a version of Breathe. That was how he proposed. So when I heard Breathe on flamenco guitar, I was like, <laughs> something's about to happen. <laughs> in Spain, right. It's like, it's like in Spain, but hearing this song. So um, we decided very quickly on where we wanted to get married in, in Montana and, and when and set it for the summer. And so those are kind of the first questions you get out. And then, you know, we had this sort of wait and see, you know, who would sort of take the lead on planning. But we both came together. Remember, we'd just gotten back from that trip and came together about a week later. We both said, I think I know who should marry us. And he was like, oh, I think I should know. I was like, oh, OK, well. <laughs> Let's say, let's say it so we can kind of talk and hash this out. And we both said, like, Andrea, Andrea Burns. Burns. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. She's got the gig. <laughs> I booked it, you guys. I booked it. There was no, we were like, I can't remember her name, but it's something like. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Mine's more like. No kiss of death for her. She got it. So, yeah. So there was just, and you know, part of it was me thinking, you know, obviously there was an In the Heights connection. There was a theater connection, but. You know, it's because, you know, we can talk about both of you this way, but you, especially Andrea, like, you know, you're from the theater world, but you transcend that so much. Like you are, you know, this was not a particularly stagey theatrical wedding. We weren't going for like a Broadway themed wedding or something. You, you really, 
you know, leap out of that world and, and into our lives. And, you know, whether or not you were a star of stage and screen, um, you were the person we, we, we felt was best. And we needed somebody to wrangle a crowd that was half white and half Cuban. So there was the nobody- Jew in you with the Cuban, <laughs> well, with the Latina in you. There was nobody who could wrangle a crowd in two languages like on <laughs> Special skills. Well, thank you. That was that was the great honor of my life. I had never done that before. So I was so honored and blown away when these guys asked me to do it. And, and it was extraordinary. Um, now, you said you uh, decided to get married in Montana because that's where you're originally from, Kurt, correct? Yes. And, and um, Carlos, you lived in Cuba until you were 11, am I mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then you came over with your family. Yes. So, and now you have, um, your family is in New Jersey. Right. You have your grandma, your and, and your mom and sister mm -hmm. and everything. But uh, yes, we had to. So we sent all the Cubans to Montana, <laughs> and uh, we had a and it was it was a spectacularly beautiful wedding. So um, I think we actually have a picture. David, can you pull up a little bit? So oh, there we are in the mountains. There's Kurt and Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. Me, and then. <laughs> <laughs> They were the most beautiful, <laughs> beautiful set of grooms. And uh, it was an extraordinary, magical day. And uh, yeah, so now let's rewind a little bit and talk about how how we all met and how we connected as couples. And it first goes to, I think, Carlos and me at On Your Feet, right? Yes. So we did On Your Feet together. Um, and we bonded, I think, initially because we were both bringing our lunches every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I have to say, I don't know if you know this, but the very first time I saw you coming in, you were coming into rehearsal for like a salsa private oh, yeah. lesson or something. And I was just finishing pre-production. I was coming out and you were coming in. This is my, fir my first Broadway show. And I was like, great, this incredible show, whatever. It was exciting. But it wasn't until you walked in the room and I was like, wait, Andrea Burns is playing in the show <laughs> that I was already like, okay, this is like a real Broadway show. Like in my head, maybe it wasn't like, it's a Broadway show, but like, who's in it? Like, what is this? <laughs> like, <for you? laughs> oh, my oh my God, look at us. And, and there we oh, are. Oh, there we are together. Mm. Um, we had but it really was. It really was like the moment that I was like, "Okay, this is a real Broadway show." Like I'm in a Broadway show with Andrea Bird. But go ahead, because that is the first time we did connect. Well, we would we would eat our lunches together uh, in rehearsals, but actually, the show opened out of town in Chicago, and we both had we had apartments next to each other, and we were cooking all the time. Yes. So that so people were going out to dinner and we were staying home yes. and cooking and then that became like the big bond and I'd come over with my pan to your kitchen and and uh, <laughs> that was that's where it started and we were pretty inseparable pretty quickly I would say mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. right it was just a great kindred spirits meeting and we laughed a lot and we cooked a lot and we had a lot of really happy memories and you were rooming with our very good friend Henry Gainza that's right uh, who. Um, so many stories about Henry, but why don't, why don't, we, why don't you share Carlos? Good, good stories. No, I mean, but share, yeah, good stories. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we just left it out there, like so many stories about Henry. So Gaines. many stories so many. about Henry Gaines. No, <laughs> golden-throated Henry Gaines. Like you, you and Henry also became very close. You were roommates. And can yeah. you um, explain why you became so close on that show and what that, what your bond turned into as you went to Broadway? Yeah. The brand, I know. No, I mean, Henry Gaines has so many stories. <laughs> no, I mean, the Cuban in me has always been, you know, it's part of who I am. And even though I left at 11, it, it really is part of everything I do. And, and the culture is so strong, as you know. And of course, we connected through through food and the same with Henry. Like, we immediately were, like, inseparable. And he even though he was born here I, which always impresses me that these cuban americans that are born here um but are still so so true to the culture right mm -hmm. so for me it always amazes me when i meet someone that's born here but i'm always like oh my god you are so cuban like mm -hmm. i know you you are my uncles you are you know every humor like i always test it like i do jokes that are very or slang language or something about like that it's in cuba and they know it it's that miami cuban so yeah. Henry and I immediately became very, very close. And 
we became the Guajiros on Broadway, which means Guajiros is like a, I always have a hard time explaining what Guajiros. I always translate in English as, as bumpkin because it's it's not so like pejorative as as to say hick or something, but it's kind sure. of like like a bumpkin, like a yeah. benign country yeah, folk. Yeah, yeah. Innocent, someone right. Folk, yeah. innocent person who is not well versed in the city slicker ways. Exactly. <laughs> but very pure, very positive and like hard worker and yeah, just, course. you know, wanting opportunities. But Henry was also his first Broadway show. And I don't know when it started. I think it started in, I actually do know when it started. It started in Chicago. We were in tech rehearsal. We were looking out the Oriental <laughs> Theater. <laughs> and there were so many little lights up the balconies. It's an exquisite theater. It's really, really beautiful. Incredible theater. But and there was no one up in these balconies all the way up there, right? We were in tech rehearsal. And a whole day would go by and all these little lights are on. And one day I just turned to Henry in Spanish and I was just like, who is paying for this electricity? <laughs> <laughs> and only a guajiro would. Right? And only a guajiro would. And immediately we were like seeing everything, everything through these uh, guajiro eyes of like, you know how everything moves and like what broadway is and how much money there is and it just kind of we embraced it and you know everyone's the, the fact that the cast was all latino it was so beautiful i mean you know to everyone understood immediately what it was everyone connected everyone knew what those characters were yeah. and one big thing that we started doing was making cafecito making coffee which was a tradition, right? A tradition you brought backstage was making and explain for those people watching who don't know about the the the, the short Cuban coffee, the cafecito that we all drink that you make. Right, and this I owe to my mother and my grandmother, and you know it's all this culture passing passing by. But it's it's just a little Cuban espresso with lots and lots of sugar that will get you through every tech rehearsal there is. <laughs> but I started bringing like an electric cafetera to the to the tech rehearsal to the theater, and we would do it in the dressing rooms. And we like pass it along. We would have to do like two or three versions, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, there were lines. There were lines outside his dressing room. Yes. Like, holding up their little cups, like yeah, please, please. Little, little cups, and I was like, I'm not committing to anyone. I'm just making it. Whoever's around, <laughs> whoever's around gets it. <laughs> Remember, it was such a thing. People yeah. don't know. I'm like, I told you to save me some. I was like, you weren't there. That's right. And it became a thing. Like we couldn't get through the show without the cafecitos. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It became a big tradition that you brought with you when we moved to Broadway. Right. And um, yeah, and go ahead and tell everybody. nothing. And then on Broadway, a friend of mine gave me uh, a giant cafetera, like a, just a giant one, which is right here, actually. This giant yeah. cafetera. No, wow. sent it to me. <laughs> so then on every Saturday, we, Guajiro, Henry and I, would go up to every um, theater, like every show, we would set it up and in between shows, we would bring uh, little coffees to them, which as I'm saying, and I'm like, that is so crazy. Like between two shows on Saturdays, like, you know, you're so tired. And I remember some days being like, God, I'm so tired. Like I, but it was so beautiful because it really created this. I mean, it was our first Broadway show and it really created this sense of community. Like we got to see every theater inside the theater we got to go into uh, the cast and meet the cast between shows and really see what their dynamic was. Mm -hmm. So depending on the show, we got to see, and it was such a beautiful season. I mean, On Your Feet was like all of, you know, uh, these incredible shows that like put people of color up on stage and it was all this like culture with- um, um, right, We had Allegiance, Allegiance. we had uh, On Your Feet, and of course, Hamilton was that year as well. That's right. uh, we have a clip, uh, David, can we show? the the backstage a little backstage video of the guajiros uh going to make their cafecito runs <laughs> So how amazing is that? Backstage, <laughs> Kurt made the music for this yeah, theme did, song. I did the theme we song. We recorded in the dressing room of on, of on your feet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so then everyone started signing it. So long story short, everyone, we, this tradition became a thing. And every Saturday we would go to a different show and they would sign it. They would, we would actually bring them cafecito and they would love it. People were obsessed with it. 
But we have, I mean, as I'm looking at this, it's so beautiful. We had Cats and American in Paris, Matilda, Legion, Lynn, Gloria, and, and Emilio, of course. Um, I mean, disaster were... from That's Seth. Right. Yeah. That's right. That was at season two. Yeah. yeah. On there, Jennifer is in here. Roger, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lion King, School of Rock, oh, Wayne Brady, everyone. <laughs> it was just so beautiful. Shuffle mm -hmm. along, of course. That was next door to us. Right. That was a fantastic yeah. season. So this really has become like such a treasure. <laughs> memory, a treasure. Like I look at the signatures and I remember what it felt like to go to their theater and bring them coffee and with Henry, my guajiro. Yes. And and I know first Broadway show. It was incredible, incredible experience. And um so at the time that you were in your first Broadway show, just on the same block, Kurt was at Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, the show's opened a couple, maybe two or three months apart. Oh, that's right. Right. So, right. So you were having that um, that experience together, and uh, so first of all, how cool was that to be able to just meet each other? Although Hamilton runs longer than On Your Feet, so uh, like kind of <laughs> like oh, I wasn't. No, he's joking. He's joking. He I'm would joking. Like, you know, it was like hours later. <laughs> I was trying to be polite. I was like, I don't think you waited the whole hour. <laughs> no, it was like, you know, although there would there would be the off the off night where every once in a while I would text him from the pit and I would say, you know, I found out through the grapevine that yeah. Beyonce is here or Oprah is here, and then he would hang around in the theater, depending on who the celebrity was. I was so like, who, oh, I made you at home. Who kept you? Who was the one that made you want to stay an hour? I mean, I saw Beyonce. She was wearing like a. A full orange suit. She looked like a carrot. Wow. Yeah, she was like a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> pumpkin spice latte moment. Wow. Beautiful. Oh uh, yeah, it's so many. But what was great too is that, that the you know it felt like the original cast of In the Heights was split up between those two casts, right? You oh, guys, that's true. Yeah. Luis and Doreen, and we had of course Lynn and Javi and Chris Jackson, and so what was kind of crazy is like, you know, and, and then other just like In the Heights. In the Heights was like. I remember seeing the original cast of In the Heights before I moved to New York. In fact, it was one of the things that really convinced me to move to New York, mm -hmm. which is funny. That was kind of my first job. But I, you know, I saw the original cast and I actually won a lottery seat. So I sat in the front row. Wow. And I remember, you know, Seth going by and you there and seeing Lynn and like, you know, being like, wow, what, how, how much amazing for this guy who wrote this show. And I realized that I was probably sitting about 10 feet from Alex Lackamore and from the pit of the Richard Rogers, where I ultimately. <laughs> Would have the job of conducting Hamilton, like feet away. Right, yes. like he should have. He should have turned around and said, "Like this is the future, baby." <laughs> Could have saved some time. <laughs> cut out the cut out a middleman of a few years in there. Um, but it was really profound to have seen to have had that experience of seeing the original cast of Heights, and then for us to be kind of split between these two casts, you know, basically made up of a lot of the original people. Mm. So crazy. Incredible. Um, so now I know I'm jumping around a lot in your relationship timeline, but Kurt, you ultimately became fluent in Spanish. Let's talk about that. <laughs> and yeah. German and Japanese. German during quarantine. That's like a whole other. <laughs> I'm trying to take it. He's so, a very impressive person. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I had always, I'd always, I studied French, but I'd always kind of loved languages. Like, I, you know, I dabbled in a few others when I was in school. But you know, moving to moving to New York, especially, I was like, "Well, this is—it's stupid that I don't speak Spanish. Like, why did I never mm -hmm. learn Spanish? I could have learned that sort of at any point growing up. And now I'm in my 20s. And so, in a weird way, I kind of thought, "Oh, in the Heights, great! This is going to be my chance to learn in the Heights, to learn Spanish." And as I said, nobody on that tour actually spoke <laughs> Spanish until this one joined. And so suddenly, I was like, "Okay, you know, my, there might be some added benefits of this relationship <laughs> coming along." <laughs> so, I remember the first time I went home to the house. And, you know, of course, I tripped over my tongue even trying to say, you know, gracias and like simple things. But as we started dating, you know, it became a little clearer, you know, that I really needed to learn something. And it wasn't, you know, people want to have that vision. It's like because I wanted to profess deep dying love to him in his <laughs> native language. No, it was because I wanted to know what all of his family was saying about me <laughs> when I was in the room. Because all my aunts, everyone in my family would just talk. Like even if they knew they didn't speak, they didn't speak Spanish, they would just talk to him. No, and the other one, and honestly, this is this is not going for brownie points because we're already married. But like, it really, I truly was. It was his grandmother who came to this country. You know, lived a whole life in the eastern part of Cuba. Came to this country, and you know, she doesn't speak a word of English. But I thought, if I can't, you know, really access like what this woman thinks and feels and have the love she has for him, like that is that is something I will always regret. 
And so I kind of set, set myself to it. And people always say too, like, oh, well, it must be easy because you practice at home. I mean, no, I've only recently gotten to the level where we can actually carry on a conversation. <laughs> and as patient as my dear husband is, he doesn't want to talk to, a, you know, somebody who speaks at a fourth grade level. So we speak in English at home, but he does help me. Every once in a while now, I'm like, hey, what does this expression mean? Or like, what's, yeah. what, what's a good way to say this? No, but no. Now, you're, now you're actually very good. Like, sometimes I catch myself just answering in Spanish yeah. or you. It's impressive. It's so good. It is. I mean, I was very impressed because, you know, you hear like, oh, you know, my boyfriend speaks Spanish. I was like, oh, that's cute. You know, <laughs> and uh, well, we got into the conversation and I just felt like, right, it was like same thing, expressions, colloquialisms, like things were just flowing out of you. I, I found that so impressive. So, um, so now Carlos and I are doing On Your Feet together. And then um, Peter and I are working on a show, um, I have, was an artist in residence at the Sheen Center and we were putting together a few different projects for them. And one of them, we wanted to do a concert, a Broadway concert with um, show tunes done with all Latin arrangements. And um, I've collaborated many times with Alex Lacamoire, the amazing one, uh, before. And uh, he, I had asked him about it. He was like, I'm busy, but I think Kurt would be a great fit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, okay, I mean, he's not Latin, but you know, and, and uh, I think Carlos, you were like, I think he would be fantastic. Mm. So we had a meeting, you and I, Kurt, yes. and that was so exciting. And I, I said, oh my gosh, this guy's gonna be perfect. And so we collaborated and uh, on all the arrangements that we put together for this show called Latin Broadway Party that you directed. Yep. And then I just decided Carlos had to be in. Right. <laughs> well, as we're doing now, it's just like, well, why? You know, let's exactly. It was another How extended do we get to day night. Package deal. We're all together. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we'll show you just a, we made a little promo uh, for the show that I have a clip of just to show you a little taste of what we were up to. And we're with Henry Gaines, I hear, once again. Of which there are. <laughs> we had such a good time actually yeah. putting that together and uh it was a fabulous show and we even made um carlos make his signature say, carlos <laughs> right. actually yeah, for the audience oh, yeah he was like instead of a instead of a dj we have a it's like a like a cj i think i said cj like a cafe a cafe <laughs> jockey so so we had to make coffee through the entire show and then pass it through the audience I think Hudson right. actually assisted him too, right? Yes. He did, yes, exactly. It's always a family affair. Delivering little tiny coffee to everybody in the audience. It was remarkable. Yes, and then you and Kurt. Oh, and then Kurt, you and I did uh, the very first reading of the show Brooks Ashmanskis and I wrote together, right. Love of the Game. Oh, and that was- yeah. You and I continued to collaborate with each other, which was well, fun. Thing. Yeah, we, yeah we, and we did a concert at, at NYU. I remember that one as well. Oh, that's right, we did that too, yeah. That was so fun. It was like, you know, I, I'd known Andrea as Carlos's friend and this like star of stage and I've seen you, you know, luminous on stage, but working together, I was like, oh my God, this is such a, such a, it was such a collaborative thing. It was so great. And then having Peter as the director, I was like, oh wait, okay. I see like getting to see how you two work together. I was like, oh wow. Mm -hmm. and this is like, you can't kind of almost separate, you know, you're yeah. someone when you're on the same wavelength like that. And so mm -hmm. then to work with Peter, you know, on a, on a separate project and the stuff he and Brooks is, are doing is just incredible. Mm. Well, it's like it's just like musical theater cotton candy. It's like exactly what you. It's exactly <laughs> what. You, yeah, it's so true. That's a really good piece. Yeah, it's when true. it gets when it's good in the room, it's really good. It's true. Yeah. So yes, this is but this is how you know. This is like the secret of when you have like a couple you really love. What it goes always mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Well, you can get stuck with anybody in the group and you're happy. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> and Hudson, I mean, even Hudson is in there. Like the whole family. Just, true. It's, it's true. It's true. It's true. Um, but it, we've, yeah, we've had a lot of good time together, which is why uh, one of the jobs that came my way, I got hired to come to Canyon Ranch Spa, which you know is this beautiful. <laughs> you guys are already laughing. <laughs> First of all, it happens to be a gorgeous spa in, in the Berkshires. Yeah, Berkshire. In uh, Massachusetts. 
And um, it was a couple of few summers ago now. Now I can't even remember when, but um, they wanted me to come and just do like an evening of song with an accompanist. So I asked Kurt because they give you a weekend stay there um, as part of the deal. And I said, oh my gosh, how wonderful, you know, let's go, let's all go together, the four of us. And we really did have a fantastic time. Yeah. Um, but Canyon Ranch Spa is a place where a lot of people go, I think, to at, at like crossroad moments in their lives, like to go meditate, to regroup, to realign. Um, realign. Um, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of yoga, meditation, massage, a lot of those, uh, you know, manual therapy, all of this mm -hmm. kind of stuff there. So we were like, I don't know, it feels so Zen here. Like, what do we want like, a Broadway lady? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do? Because then they showed us the room and it wasn't even, it didn't have a stage. It was like a room that had a, a library. It was the library. library, But it had a fireplace. It did oh, have, yeah, a, but it had all the books around the outside of it. Right? Okay. And then so it's like, okay, we're singing in the library. So, you know, right. I'm thinking yeah. like, you know, don't rain on my parade is not a razzle dazzle. Razzle dazzle <laughs> is out. You know, his turn. <laughs> turn is out. Exactly. <laughs> So we're just trying to, we're going through the set list, trying to find things that are a little more subdued. And um, yeah, I think we started, we get there and it was super intimate, which was actually kind of cool. I want to say it was like 12 people, it but like the room, more, yeah, probably, maybe 20 people, yeah. but the room didn't really lend itself to more. And then was in easy chairs. Remember that there were all lounge chairs. It was chairs like a living room and, and concert and, vibe. And, yeah. Yes. Not like Zoom living room concerts. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like a real living room concert. Yeah, yeah. We were just chilling, hanging out. Carlos, you sat in the audience. You and Peter sat in the audience. And we did it. And I remember um, it was, I think, an emotional time for a lot of the people there, the guests there. And as we were going through our set list, I kept kind of going back to Kurt and say, let's not do this one and let's do this one, you know, picking some little more songs that are a little more soul searching. It just seemed like the right crowd for it. And um, I think by the end, we all had kind of a transformational night um, because, well, Kurt, I mean, Carlos, you want to talk a little bit about like your experience of being in the audience that night? <laughs> no, I think, I mean, <laughs> that whole week it was just like, we're like, okay, how do we, we need to figure out how to stay here, come back again. Because honestly, people were like transformed. Like it really did. You guys did such a great job of like selecting songs. Music is such a therapy, right? Mm -hmm. And like being in the audience, you guys really curated that so beautiful. And it ended up being, yeah, very therapeutic for a lot of people. A lot of people cried during it. And, um, and you also had, you actually opened up a conversation with the audience as well. Oh, yeah. I found amazing that I don't think you'd plan to do, but you actually, because it became so intimate yeah. and you were changing stuff with Kurt that you actually started talking with the audience as well and, and having a conversation, which was remarkable. So it ended up yeah. being not at all what we thought it was going to be, yeah. but it was actually pretty deep and pretty beautiful. And those of you who have been watching my Monday nights, you, you know, I roll kind of deep anyway. So <laughs> I, I like that, you know, I like connecting with people. I'm, I'm like, I can't do any small talk, but talk to me for like three hours about all the pain in your life. And I'm, I'm down. <laughs> and so, um, so we did that and we got, our whole thing was, this was the best night. We had the best weekend, the four of us. We had massages, we did classes. We, you know, we had just such a great, we went, um, I put on Instagram today, we went canoeing together and mm -hmm. we said, how can we, this is the best. We love each other as couples traveling together. How do we make this happen on a regular basis? And we decided, I know, like maybe we can invent, create, a kind of music therapy experience that we can offer to spas like this um, as a, not just coming to see a concert, but like actually this cathartic thing where you're transformed at the end right. all through the love of musical theater, right? <laughs> so, um, so we actually, we spent like time brainstorming. The four uh, of us, yeah. Yes, I mean, Peter put together this whole thing called? Broadway CPR. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what we CPR, it. yeah. CPR, yeah. And it was Broadway, and CPR was uh, creativity, performance, and relatedness. That's right. 
Yeah. It was very cool. And actually, um, the person who had hosted us there at Canyon Ranch, who had, who had invited us, was very excited about it. And for a while, we were in conversation. Really, we were all just figuring out a way <laughs> to come and live at Canyon Ranch. Do you remember we even, we even were saying, like, okay, I'm going to be teaching, like, a movement class. Yeah, like, yeah, with the whole thing. We had to get the whole families in. Everyone, we were even hot. To, everyone had a job. We Yeah. So if you're all looking for anything like this, anyone out there. Yeah. We have, <laughs> and, and every time we would call uh, the the wonderful woman who hosted us from Canyon Ranch, every single call would finish with "Great, great, this sounds like a great idea." Um, I'm, you know, we should, you know, talk about this more. And one of us would always go, "So, when would you like us? When can we come back <laughs> and try it? You know, <laughs> yeah, we'll next month. You know, <laughs> but they didn't get it. And I think the higher it got lost in translation, I think the higher it went up. The uh, yeah, so always CPR. CPR is now available. This this is the company, <laughs> and, and we can bring you bring you back to life. Okay. Um, yeah. Yes, through the power, through the power of, of musical, musical theater. theater. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I love that relatedness because that really describes what it was. I remember yeah, I was right. Seeing, right. I mean, Stars in the Moon particularly was the Listen. one. That's what I always think of. Oh, right. like, telling yeah. a story like that. Stars a great moon. song. Uh, Jason Robert Brown turned uh, had his 50th birthday two days ago. Okay. And um, fun fact, Jason at our wedding, since this is a date night episode. <laughs> so, Carlos, you, you guys are going to love this. Okay, hold well on. I've heard this story. What, yeah. No, you haven't. No. So basically, you know, I'm getting married. Obviously, I have all my Latin, all the Venezuelans there. There has to be a Latin band. It can't just be like a regular wedding band. Or a DJ. Or, or right, it has to be like a full-on Latin band. So that's what we decided to do. So they were, you know. <laughs> exceptional. <laughs> exceptional. <laughs> At playing Latin music. So I had, to, you know, but there was a lot of like, okay, but we also have, you know, the songs that for the, the first dance, for the first dance, for this, whatever. And we have our wedding song. Here's Nat King Cole singing I Remember You, which was the song that we had chosen. It's Johnny Mercer tune. And um, we said, you know, this is what we want for our first dance, I our guess. Our first dance yeah. together. So I don't know what happened. Like, we're getting closer to the thing and they're like, yeah, 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 we got it. I was like, okay, but you have, I remember you, right? And they were like, sure, sure. I was like, you got the recording, you're ready to do it. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So then cut to the wedding day. We have the, it's all ready, we've done we're the about, ceremony. Yeah, we've done the ceremony, we're about to be announced for the first time. Right, we're about to be announced and then you do the first dance. And I said, okay, so you're ready for, uh, I remember you and they were like, Mira, yeah, nunca, nunca aprendimos esa. We never learned that one. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and they were like, yeah, just it didn't work out. Didn't get it. You know, like, no, like, totally unapologetically, like, you, you know, that's a boring song anyway. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we got this instead. Yeah, that was their room. No. Oh. Like, so, yeah. That so song. meanwhile, I was like, that is a song. That is our wedding song. Are you sure you don't know it? We don't know it. I was like, okay, then please make an announcement. Please send, I please page Jason Robert Brown. <laughs> what? <laughs> like where I was waiting to come out. Yeah, I was like, please get him, get him to come back here immediately. So poor Jason's like trying to just be a guest at my wedding. He comes back. He's like, what is happening? I was like, they didn't learn my wedding song. I know you know I remember you, Johnny Mercer. And he was like, of course I know it. I was like, excellent. Thank didn't you. Work, didn't he write down yes. the lyrics? So he was like, napkin? He's I, like he goes, I, I said, you. can you sing it? We got a napkin. He wrote down the lyrics. <laughs> and he's up there at the keyboard in front of the band. And it's just him. Just him and singing, no band. <laughs> like, well, we went from like late 90s um, uh, Soho, New York to about mid fifties cat skills. Which by the way, <laughs> is what I love. Yes, and by the way, a little known fact, but like that is a superpower anybody has on their wedding day, you can page Jason Robert Brown and he will show up. <laughs> exactly, uh, it is amazing. It, but like it is there, it's an option for everybody. So the wonderful Jason Robert Brown sat there with a napkin with the lyrics scrawled on and sang, I remember you for us for first dance. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, is that crazy? But do you love it? And then, of course, the Latin band killed it for the rest of the night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, That's, so That's too much. Oh, look at this. Hi, Susan. This is so cool. We feel like we're hanging out with these two loving couples. Yay. I'm glad Welcome. you're here. Hang out all the time. Oh, Susan, please. Oh, my God. I wish you could taste them. So good. Yeah. So good. Here's ours. Did you see? Yeah. 
I may <laughs> not fry them in a pool of oil. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> We fried ours. And by fry, I mean push a little button that Beep. says three minutes. <laughs> Honey Maduro said that. Don't tell me that. <laughs> That's right. It's the call of the Maduro. Um, oh. <laughs> I hear it often. Um, okay. I have to check to see if there are some donations. Um, not yet. I think they will be coming in around this time. Okay. Not yet. Um, anyway, you guys have just been such a joy such joy in my life. I'm so grateful to have um, to have you in my life. Mm. I'm so grateful for the fun you bring. I'm so grateful that we're so compatible as couples. Um, you know, we also have, Carlos and I have a very deep spiritual bond and we also share that we're married to super, super high achieving type A <laughs> <laughs> types. We share that and we love that. Um, okay, wait, it's donations Donations are in. I'm so excited. Um, Allie Brown from Massachusetts. Hey, six, your Canyon Ranch. $16. Thank you. That's a Canyon Ranch shout out. Woohoo! Um, oh, $50 from our dear friend, Sydney Burgoyne. Aww, Love you, Sydney. Thank, thank, you, thank Sydney. you. Uh Oh, and Denise Rosner from California, another great friend, $50. Thank, thank you. you. Oh my God. It's like, it's Peter and Andrea night. It starts. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't it be? <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you. $50 from Peter and May Lee. Wow. Thank, thank you, you, my friends. Wow. Thank you for the support. Thank you for these donations that are going to such a good cause. And thank you for being with us. Mm. So in celebrating love and loved ones, um, I'd love to ask Kurt to share with us, to share his gifts tonight. Um, this is a piece that was played at your wedding uh, by Alex Lacamoire, correct? That's right. And and did you come? What does this come from? Did you compose it? Did no? It's, it's actually written by uh, a friend of mine who's a composer in Montana named Philip Auberg. And <clears throat> there's something about this piece that when we decided to get married in Montana, it just it sounds like Montana. It sounds like mm. wide open spaces. Mm. And <clears throat> this was what we actually walked down the aisle to. And so I asked Alex to learn it, and he played it at our wedding. And uh, you know, being cooped up in a New York apartment for the last three months has made me think of these same wide open spaces. And so. That's why I wanted to just uh, make a little offering of it tonight. Oh. Thank you. We would love I, I know, Thank this you. moment. And I can I squeeze in there yeah, the please. story of your wedding that, oh, yeah, as yeah. you said, when we were walking down the aisle, you gave us the advice of taking our time because I don't know if you want to tell the story. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Very too, quickly. That's and then we're story. running out of late. That's too good a story. Well, if you are like hanging out with us, you're about to hang out for about another hour. No, no. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, we got eight minutes. Please squeeze yeah. in. I know this is tricky, but I've already said this on Stars in the House because uh, a lot of you know recently I, I broke my ankle about six months ago. I'm doing great. I'm back. I'm great. Um, but 25 years ago, I also broke my foot. <laughs> it's what I do on Broadway every 25 years. The silver anniversary. Yeah, exactly. I'm just like, it's time. So um, so I had, I was just getting over my broken foot uh, when I was getting married and I couldn't even be in my heels. I had to be in flats for my wedding. And my grandmother, may she rest, my beautiful grandmother, Isabel, um, did the, the, the hem for me at the last minute um, of my dress so that I could be in these little flats. And um, all the Latin girls are like, you were flats. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it happened. But anyway, <laughs> um, so, a lot of my Broadway community friends knew about that, but this was before the internet. So a lot of people didn't know. And it's the extraordinary Victoria Clark, who was at my wedding, who did not know about my foot injury. And she came up to me after afterwards and said, I have never seen a more beautiful walk down the aisle because you took your time. <laughs> and it was so extraordinary the way you took every moment of this one time you get to do this in life. And all I could think of was that's as fast as I could go. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sensitive walk for a reason, but I remembered that. So and walk. so I told that to you. Kurt you and, me that, and it really is like, as I always picture our wedding, our beautiful wedding, it really was like the, the moment I take away from it is the walking down the aisle. Because I would like take a step of just pretending I was Andrea Burns with a broken ankle. <laughs> <laughs> Looking to the right and the left and listening to this song. So, yeah. And on that note, Kirk, take it away. <laughs>
Wow. Thank you. Can you just feel the big oh sky? Gosh, Can you see so it all around beautiful. you? It brought back so many beautiful memories. Ooh. Wedding Ooh. was outstanding. So beautiful. As I always say to people, it's like we got to the day of the wedding and I, you know, you think about so many things that week and I remember thinking, it's the day of the wedding. Like we are show people and we have not rehearsed this thing. This is, <laughs> this is a major production. We have music, we have moving pieces. I was like, we haven't produced this, produced this thing because we've been so busy. And Andrea, we can't went to your cabin there on the ranch, and you said it's like kind of like Canyon Ranch, but a different kind of thing. You said, <laughs> "Tranquila, it's okay, relax." Mm. And I show, I remember I showed up and I looked around. And I was like, "Okay, we have Andrea Burns, we have Peter Flynn, we have Alex Lackamore, we have Ian Weinberger, we have enough Broadway music directors, directors, and stars to put on just about any production. Yeah. It's going to be great, and it was. And thank Jay, you, thank you yeah, all. Yeah, I know. I. I I always have these images flashing by again. The other image I have is Peter. It was like, as we're coming down the aisle, which, you know, it was like a whole package deal. You're always the family <laughs> package deal. <laughs> well, we're out there waiting for, it was like, oh wait, is Peter like stage managing our wedding? He was like directing <laughs> the whole package deal. We didn't read that. Totally. Peter being so sure calm, how, just like must... giving us, a, I have this clear image of just you like looking at me like with your finger. It's like, Okay, now you go. <laughs> <laughs> in the pacing of the wedding as we're going down the aisle. Yeah. So thank you. It was yeah. gorgeous. It was. it was such a pleasure to be a part of and be there. And um, it's also a little known fact, the first time that Hudson Flynn ever got behind the wheel of a car and drove for the very first time because there was open space. So after the wedding, I think the next day, yeah. um, somebody else was doing it with their uh, daughter. And so he looked somebody at me and Somebody else? Like, it was. Oh, oh my God! It was your sister. My sister did it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I so we thought it wasn't behind the wheel of a rental car. I was like, it's a big open space with a rental car. Why not? Yes. No. It was beautiful, but I want to say yes. You had all those wonderful, talented people around, and and a lot of production values, and of course, nature providing the mm. the scene, mm. but. It was the love. It's always the love that makes the wedding. Mm. And that love between you is beautiful. And I, you know, we're so honored to be in the glow of it. And we love you and, and are blessed by the, the union you share and each of you individually. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for coming to date night. Amazing date night. I cannot mm, wait really until we can do this for real. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'm so glad. Thank you for sharing this beautiful time that we have together with everybody. It meant a lot. So thank you thank for having you. us. All right. We'll see you soon. Great to see you. Love you. Safe, everyone. Mm. Oh, my oh. gosh. Okay. Oh. okay. Well, <laughs> we were going to come back to us, but you know what we'd like to do? Uh, Okay. Oh, hi. <laughs> right. We're taking over. We gave them the kiss of death. We gave them the kiss of death. They're out. That, that was hi, the whole extended the kiss of death. It was Look, just a way of taking right. some pantano. Roll credits. I feel like <laughs> that means like I kiss of death myself. Okay. Um, I'm going to see us out. I always have a little musical, <laughs> musical uh, send off. And um, tonight, in honor of love, in honor of weddings, and in honor of you. I'm going to sing. I remember you. You're the one who made my dreams come true a few kisses ago. I remember you. You're the one who said, I love you too. I do, didn't you know? I, I remember, too, a distant bell and stars that fell like rain out of the blue. When my time is through and the angels ask me to recall the thrill of it all, then I will tell them I remember you. Happy date night, honey. Happy date night, honey. Okay, no drink. Love you. Oh. <laughs> Kurtzito, will you play us out? Bye.
<laughs> 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 <laughs>